welcome to another lively edition of the deadly experiment, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. This program is all about taking deadly aim at the enemies of our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our nation, and our people. The true Israel of God, Jacob Israel, which is personified by America today, as it says in the book of Isaiah, the unwalled city, the unwalled New Jerusalem, the land surrounded by oceans, two major oceans. This is the Israel of God, and her people are here. Not that flea-bitten, tin-plated, tintinabulating trash can in the Middle East that calls itself Israel. That's the fake. That's the plan of God to bring about two seed lines, as you see in the background, two opposite seed lines, the good figs and the bad figs, God's children and Satan's seed line. Yes, Satan does have children on the earth. You don't believe me? Just go to the book of John, the Gospel of John, and you'll read it. And Jesus spoke to them who would murder him in John chapter 8, verse 44, when he says, ye are of your father the devil, meaning you are his children because you were born from the sperma of the serpent in the garden and you do his deeds. He was a murderer then. Your murderer is now. You're going to murder me. You'll murder the apostles. You killed most of the prophets. And you kill in Revelation 17, the Bible says, and in her, in this Babylon of the end times, which is the city of Jerusalem, was, was found the blood of all those shed on the earth. World War I, World War II, together, 80 million people perished, civilian, and military because hmm. of the Rothschild banking families hmm. who brought about that world war. Let me say hello again to my dear uh, co-host here today, young convert Tony. Hello, Tony the Tiger. How's it going, Rick? It's going. It's powerful stuff you're talking about over it there. It is. It's the word of God. It's the truth. It is. It is. And you're, you're mentioning, so first to preface the whole thing is, as a Christian believer, you believe exactly the, in the Word of God and what Jesus says. And if you believe in this, then you do, in a way, believe that in a conspiracy and that the world is a conspiracy. But sure, Jesus was the victim of that conspiracy to murder him. He was. And the world itself is a stage. And when you see these... Um, like the formation of the central banking system in 1913, then the subsequent mm -hmm. wars that yeah. started. And we all know that war is a racket. And, um, yes. and the federal mafia, uh, essentially what they are, they are the kings of extortion on this planet. Yes. And then you have, of course, the means to propagate, the medium in which they propagate all these things, the media. The media. And the media, it literally falls right into the description of Jesus Christ. It is of, the, it is of the devil because nothing that comes out of the media's mouth is true. And if there is any sort of truth to it, it is spun with mm -hmm. deception. It is just wrapped mm -hmm. up in a web of lies. So there is, it, it's all moot whenever they do speak of anything true in the media. Well, absolutely. I mean, you, they will give you some truth because the biggest lie contains a little truth. They'll tell you what time of day it is, the weather <laughs> forecast, the sporting <laughs> events. But when it comes to the major issues of our time, who is behind so-called terrorism, who is behind the banking system of almost all the nations of the world, who took over Libya, stole her resources, right. set up a central bank two days later. We know it's the synagogue of Satan. Right. We and know because God tells us that. Now, if you don't believe God, then believe Tom Brokejaw, believe Walter Cronkite, believe uh, Lying Lester and Lying mm. Brian. Go ahead, believe them. I don't want to believe them, do you? No. But, but they're liars. But here's the thing is, even if you don't necessarily believe it, because we think the false sense of nationalism that we spoke yes. about in the last program. Indoctrination. We don't mind. think that they'd lie to us. Why would they lie to us? But if you actually look at documented fact, factual proof. Which we've, we've shown here in this program. We've shown, and even people who are part of academia, there is obviously half-truths in the academic world. Um, Noam Chomsky, who I do not support all of his views, and I definitely don't subscribe to um, 
the way he interprets certain things, but he has written, and so have other historians, that this has been done over and over and over again. The, the destabilization of a perfectly good country trying to establish a healthy economy, the destabilization of it, and then the implementation of a central banking system after, after which the, the uh, country has been put into debt. Because once the company is in debt, it needs a lifeline, and then the central banking system comes along to implement its structure of power so that it can have control over the resources and have it by the you-know-what. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, it takes the media to perpetuate deception. Mm -hmm. And in the 1930s and 40s, uh, for instance, Walter Cronkite, anyone can look this up, he was the, supposed to be the dean of broadcasting, the dean mm -hmm. of news, the father of American media news. And yet he admitted as a correspondent in the 1930s with Russia, Soviet Russia, preparing for war against the West, against Germany, he said, I have done everything conceivable to paint the Soviet Union in a positive light while doing everything I can to negate the image of Germany as a victim. So he was telling you then what others were found out to be, that he was lying. Essentially, mm -hmm. he was lying. He was painting a picture not reporting news. The New York Times is a classic example of lie after lie in the Nobel uh, Pulitzer Prizes they had won. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Walter Durante was lying in the Soviet Union. They had to give back the award. They admitted that he lied. In the 1930s, you had the John Reeds going to Soviet Russia. In the 1950s, you had Herbert Matthews writing about how good Castro was. In the 1970s and 80s, you had the Communist War in Central America, and they were painting the guerrillas as good guys, just like they're doing now in Syria. The rebels mm. claim, the rebels are telling us this. Well, of course, they're in bed with them. They're embedded right. journalists. So we have no integrity anymore in the media like we did in the days of H.L. Mencken, the Baltimore right. papers, and, and men like Gary Garrett. And most of the people in the media today don't even know much about them because they're not interested in truth. Right. They're interested in this. And who greases the palm? Who hires these people in the media to serve as monkeys on TV, you know, to serve as little anchors? They're the, you know, the powers that be, the synagogue of Satan. So I'd say, if you want to argue with me, you go ahead. But you're going to argue with him first, with God, because he's the author of all that is. He created everything from nothing, and he can make nothing out of everything. And he's going to come with a thunder. And what city is he going to totally destroy from off the face of the earth, he says? In Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He will wipe it off the map. In Matthew 24, he talks about the evil fig tree, does he not? He does. Learn the parable, Jesus told his disciples, of the evil fig tree planted when? In this generation of the end. We're living in that time now, folks. Jerusalem today runs the United States, as we can see in these farcical election campaigns. It rules Europe today, and soon the ten horns will be in place. They will be supernatural entities, as it says in the scriptures, and they will be deceiving the world when the man of sin appears in Jerusalem, the city of Antichrist. Now, to buttress what Tony has just said about the economy and who owns the banks and so forth, we have a special video I want you to watch very carefully about the six things that are going to happen following an economic collapse which is coming. Right now, that video. After the collapse, six likely events that will follow an economic crash. It's not too difficult to understand that we are well on our way to a paradigm shift in America. In fact we're in the midst of it right now. The writing is on the wall and can no longer be ignored. The US government has run up trillions of dollars in debt, and given the recent debates over the country's debt ceiling, we can rest assured that neither Congress or the President will act to curtail spending and balance the budget. We will continue adding trillions of dollars to the national debt clock until such time that our creditors no longer lend us money. From the monetary side, the Federal Reserve's response to this unprecedented crisis has been to simply print more money as is necessary. On top of the trillions in dollars already printed thus far, the Fed continues quantitative easing to the tune of about $80 billion per month. It's the only arrow left in the Fed's quiver, 
because failing to inject these billions into stock markets and banks will lead to an almost instant collapse of the U.S. financial system. Unfortunately, the current strategy is chock full of its own pitfalls, the least of which being the real possibility of a hyperinflationary environment developing over coming months and years. On Main Street, average Americans have seen their wealth decimated. They've lost millions of jobs and homes over the course of the last five years. And if recent reports are any indication, the destruction of the middle class will continue unabated for years to come. The resulting effect is a vicious negative feedback loop that continues to build upon itself. Americans no longer have money, or credit, to spend to prop up the economy, thus more jobs will be lost, leading to more people requiring government assistance for everything from food to shelter. We are, on every level, facing a collapse of unprecedented scale. As noted by international man Jeff Thomas of Casey Research, it's not that difficult of an exercise to predict what's coming next. The number of people whose eyes have been opened seems to be growing, and many of them are asking what the collapse will look like as it unfolds. What will the symptoms be? Well, the primary events are fairly predictable, they would include major collapses in the bond and stock markets and possible sudden deflation, primarily of assets followed by dramatic inflation, if not hyperinflation, primarily of commodities, followed by a crash of several major currencies, particularly the euro and the US dollar. We know a collapse is coming. If you're paying attention you probably have the distinct feeling that we are in the middle of it right now. And guess what? The government and military know it's coming too, as evidenced by large-scale simulations of exactly such an event and its fallout. But the collapse of our financial system, or hyperinflation of our currency, or a meltdown in U.S. Treasuries is only the beginning. We know some or all of these events are all but a foregone conclusion. What we don't know is the timing of the trigger event that causes the global panic to ensue and what will happen after these primary events take hold. According to Jeff Thomas, while we can't know for sure, the following secondary events are the most likely outcomes when the system as we have come to know it destabilizes. The secondary events will be less certain, but likely, increased unemployment, currency controls, protective tariffs, severe depression, etc. But, along the way, there will be numerous surprises actions taken by governments that may be as unprecedented as they would be unlawful. Why? Because, again, such actions are the norm when a government finds itself losing its grip over the people it perceives as its minions. Here are a few. Travel restrictions. This will begin with restrictions on foreign travel, including suspension slash removal of passports. This has begun in a small way in both the EU and US. Later, travel restrictions will be extended within the boundaries of countries, highway checkpoints, etc. Confiscation of wealth. The EU has instituted the confiscation of bank accounts, which can be expected to become an international form of governmental theft. This does not automatically mean that other assets, such as precious metals and real estate will also be confiscated, but it does mean that the barrier for confiscation has been eliminated. There is therefore no reason to assume that any asset is safe from any government that approves theft through bail-ins. Food shortages. The food industry operates on very small profit margins and survives only as a result of quick payment of invoices. With dramatic inflation, marginal businesses, suppliers, wholesalers and retailers, will fall by the wayside. The percentage of failing businesses will be dependent upon the duration and severity of the inflationary trend. Squatters' Rebellions a dramatic increase in the number of home and business foreclosures will result in homelessness for anyone whose debt exceeds his ability to pay even those who presently appear to be well off. As numbers rise significantly, a new homeless class will be created amongst the former middle class. As they become more numerous, large-scale ownership of property may give way to large-scale possession of property. Riots These will likely happen spontaneously due to the above conditions, but if not, governments will create them to justify their desire for greater control of the masses. Martial Law The U.S. has already prepared for this, with the passing of the 2012 National Defense Authorization Act, 
NDAA, which many interpret as declaring the U.S. to be a battlefield. The NDAA allows the suspension of habeas corpus, indefinite detention, and the assumption that any resident may be considered an enemy combatant. Similar legislation may be expected in other countries that perceive martial law as a solution to civil unrest. Five distinct crises Americans will face after an economic collapse. Friday, September 2, 2016 by J.D. Hayes In recent days, Central bankers from several Western nations met in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and issued a common plea to their respective governments, help. The message should have resonated much louder and further than it did, but its importance was lost on an illiterate mainstream media and a distracted public. What central bankers from the United States, Japan, and Europe were really saying is that they've run out of ideas about how to lift their respective economies out of their cycle of low to no growth. In short, Nothing they have tried over the past several years since the Great Recession has worked to stimulate and grow their economies. If the people who are supposed to be the best economic minds on the planet don't know what else to do, then you can be sure that a collapse is already on its way. The only question now is when it will hit. When it does, Americans in particular will face a series of crises that most of us will be unable to mitigate, though those of us who have spent the past few years preparing will be better off than most. In no particular order, the crises all of us will face are Widespread hunger, most Americans never think about going hungry because a there are supermarkets all over the place, and b even if you don't have a job the government will provide you with the means to purchase food, via tax-supported entitlement programs. But what most don't realize is that food logistic chains in the U.S. are so fragile that no U.S. city will be able to feed its population in the event of an collapse. Hunger will lead scores to raid store shelves, emptying them in a matter of minutes. After that, the only food that will be available to anyone who has not stocked up on long-term storable foods or who has no ability to grow some will be whatever is trucked in by the government. And since the economic collapse will be nationwide, the government's ability to distribute food will be maxed out immediately. Sporadic public services, in a collapse situation, expect widespread looting and rioting, which will also put a major strain on available public services, including fire, EMS, and police. Anyone who does not have the ability to protect and defend themselves will be at greater risk, and that is likely to be most people, especially those living in large gun-free zones called American cities. Healthcare services will also be heavily strained, if they don't collapse outright. Social unrest, widespread unemployment, chaos, and economic collapse will mean that, overnight, unemployment will skyrocket, reaching 50, 60, 70 percent or higher. This will only add to the panic and social chaos and unrest, as tens of millions of Americans take to the streets as a means of trying to support themselves and their families. Regular employment will take months or even years to return, as millions of small, medium, and large businesses go bust. The only economy that will emerge in the short to midterm is a barter economy, so it's best now to begin collecting items that are very useful to barter. Transportation, with little to no money to spend, Americans won't be able to afford gasoline for their vehicles. Companies won't be able to buy fuel for their transport services, and public transportation will also likely collapse because cities will devolve into war zones. Having alternative forms of transportation like gas-sipping motorcycles and scooters, or even bicycles, will be a major benefit to you. Housing woes, this might actually be the least of your worries. If the economy goes belly up and you lose your job, the bank may come after your house, or it may not. In 2007-2008 during the height of the Great Recession, foreclosures skyrocketed, a phenomenon that went on for years afterward. But a great collapse will lead to far more loan defaults than what took place then. What will banks do with so much excess property on their hands? They won't be able to sell it, so it's possible they won't act to foreclose on it. But if they do, you're going to need to find somewhere to go. Okay, folks, we're back. Well, 
Tony, what do, you, what do you think about this economic collapse scenario? Doesn't it tie in with the program we did on martial law? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. The economic collapse is imminent. Um, just the, um, the nature of the economy, it's kind of programmed into the nature. It's destined to collapse at some point because it's, there's no money. As we know, it's all backed by debt. There's and nothing backing them. Everybody money. owes somebody something. So based on that, there's always going to be um, a debt that's greater than the amount of money that can pay off the debt. So it's, it's not sustainable. Therefore, it's going to collapse regardless of what else is going on in the world. But it's going to conveniently collapse at a time of outside, externally from the economy, just crisis in general with terrorism, all these staged terrorist mm -hmm. attacks. Those are the four winds, you see, right. all coming together at one time worldwide. Hmm. So we have PSYOPs, like we just saw the PSYOP on last week's show, or the previous show about uh, New York and Minnesota. Uh, we have these, uh, what, the banking crisis. Mm -hmm. We have terror, then cyber terror. Then we have um, militants across the country, class warfare that they're right. creating in the media, uh, black versus white and so on and so forth. Gender warfare. Right, right. It's all, it's just all at one time. When that happens, you'll know that, that things are going to be very quickly descending into what we call the period of two and a half months, half of the five months of the reign of Satan's children and Satan in the book of Revelation. See, seven years is not the number. Revelation chapter 9, it says, and those years were shortened into months. And it's five months, two and a half months of war and peace and confusion and destruction, and then two and a half months of Satan. Satan comes back to heal the mortal wound, to heal the nation as Jesus. It says in Revelation 12, it says there's silence in heaven for half an hour. That means, see, people don't know what that means. You've got to understand the book of Revelation. But the rapture people say, you don't have to know that. Don't worry, Jesus is going to come take you up in the air and you're going to be with mm -hmm. him on a honeymoon. No, that's the lie. That's the lie that Jesus, the false Jesus, will be perceived as the real Jesus. Silence in heaven for a half of an hour means that Satan is cast back to the earth. He's in heaven now, hmm. held in chains, it says, by the archangel Michael. And when he comes back, a half an hour, a half of five is what? Two and a half. Hmm. Two and a half months he will rule, and he will rule with a rod of iron, but he will be hmm. perceived as a man of peace. And that's when we get taken to Jerusalem on a nice free trip to witness against him, and that's when the Holy Spirit shall speak through many of us and saying he's not the man. Because we're not going to premeditate what we said. It says it in the scriptures, premeditate not what you will say. Let the Holy Spirit speak through you. So mm. we're going to see some amazing things, folks, in just a matter of months occurring in this country. And the American public has no idea because they're, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, Tony, mm. right now, all the indicators are that we're going to have Obama in the White House for a third term. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, people might question how what's going on today will line up with exactly, just exactly how, what it's, uh, the prophecies in the Bible. And it really does start, like, we need more than however long we have in this segment to really describe what's going on. A lot on. more. A lot longer. But starting with World War II and how the Hala hoax kind of awarded <laughs> the, Ju the Jewish community Israel. So With the bad fig trees they planted so, in Jerusalem. So Jews already have their uh, geopolitical center uh, in Israel. And then ever since then, they have become Mossad and the CIA, one of the main proponents of not only propaganda, but the founder and sustainer of terrorism. So they're creating all of these boogeymen along with the United States. And it, it's just all falling into place. It really is Isn't just all amazing? falling into place. Isn't that amazing you can see that so perfectly? All because you know the scriptures, you know enough to get into the and world. And I don't, I know enough and I don't, I still don't know enough. I know enough oh, for my eyes to be thing. open, but I don't know enough. I've I learned more in the last couple of years since I became ill and came back, God raised me up, than I ever knew before in my life. It all fits, the pieces of the puzzle fit. And you're right, that That's bad fig pieces. tree Jesus denounced the planting of the seed of the evil tree, which is 1948, that's the generation of the end when so-called Israel was created. The first time ever 
in the history of this age that the Kenites, as they call themselves Jews, the Kenites had a state of their own. That had to be following the debacle of World War II hmm. in order to pity themselves and create world sympathy for them to get away with creating the very kind of conditions they claim were the case during right. uh, Nazi Germany. Exactly. Right? I mean, and, it's and unbelievable. And I'm not anti-Semitic, as but they will Shemite. frame me. You're a Shemite. You're not anti-Semitic. No. They are anti-Semitic. But they, li they literally, if you really, the synagogue of Satan, Jewish people, are at the top of these hierarchical pyramids in, yeah. in the media, in the financial, in business, in right. all the realms in which they can facilitate and control right. and oversee information, resources, and power. And yet, somehow, they have always been the victims. They've always been the victims. That's, that's the key to the world system of the whole world being deceived, as Jesus said. It is deceived because the deceivers are in control of all of the major media outlets. And we've read the name, media. the identities many times. We've revealed it because it's not hidden. A number of people themselves in that, uh, shall we say, that ethnic line mm. have said, yes, we do control the media. Ariel Sharon uh, of Israel, when uh, before he was taken down, right at the time of 9-11, he said uh, on your Israel radio, he was quoted as having said that the American people know that we control the media. He says they know it, and that's all he had to say. We control it, they know it, and they accept it. Because and they don't even care. Dumb. Well, they and don't. They don't even care. The reason why most people are having a good time right now when things are still basically sane is because God says in His Word that my people, the true Israelite people, the true Shemites, like yourself, the sons of the Noah, Noah who is white and fair in his race, says in Genesis, they are stupid. God says my people are a little bit dumb. They're like the lost sheep who can be led astray very easily. And sure enough, they'll believe every lie that comes down the pike as long as the media swear to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, we're just about out of time. Two great programs. Tony the Tiger, amen. Thank God for you and Thank for all God. the saints that are coming in this generation and the youngest generation. Thank you all, folks. Remember, the truth shall set you free. And uh, Rick Adams saying, Yahweh blesses elect.